Coming up on this episode of Before You Buy, Leo is tackling the Philips Hue. You know, those the, the cool light bulbs that everybody's talking about. Plus, Shannon takes on the AQ Audio Smart Speaker, and Liz and John are teaming up to tackle Beats by Dre with their hands. It's all coming up next. Netcasts you love. From people you trust. This is Twit. Bandwidth for Before You Buy is brought to you by Cashfly at C A C H E F L Y dot com. This episode of Before You Buy is brought to you by Audible.com. To download a free audiobook of your choice, go to audiblepodcast.com slash before you buy. Hey, everybody. Welcome to another episode of Before You Buy. This is Twit's product reviews show. And usually this is Leo sitting here introducing the show to you. It's me because Leo was off at CES actually looking at a lot of products that we're hoping to get on future episodes of Before You Buy. Shannon Morse, our producer, is there as well. So they're busy bees. They'll be both back later in the show, although they both have reviews for you. So it's not as if you have to miss either of the two people who put the show together each week but of course this is a this is a this is a, a crowd a crowdsourced project here at twit we all kind of get together and we try to review as much products as possible and uh, give our honest opinions to you on what you should try what you should buy and what you should definitely not buy so let's get right into it our first review is by our very own Brian, who just happens to be behind the controls right now. Hey, oh, Brian hey, Burnett. Sarah. How's it going? Good, good. Glad you're hosting. Well, glad that you let me. That was very nice of you. Brian has a lot of pull around here, and he can shut me down if he wants to. So I'm glad I'm on your good side this week. Uh, this is the Sensu Portable Airbrush. And so, uh, I don't know. Should we get right into it? Yeah. Let me just toss to it real quick. <laughs> Go ahead. <laughs> Hi, Brian from BYB here to show you the Sensu stylus and brush for touchscreen devices. So this little stylus was originally a Kickstarter, which met its goal of $7,500 very quickly. You can now purchase this for $39.99. So when you first look at the Sensu, it's crafted very nicely. It fits together very well. Um, you can tell there's a lot of attention to detail. So on one end of the brush is the stylus, um, and it works really well for what it is, but where this Sensu brush really shines is when you pull out the brush. Now if you're an artist and you've been using brushes to paint with on typical canvas and stuff, uh, the feel of the Sensu is really nice. So in my test, I was using an iPad 3, and I was using uh, Autodesk SketchUp, I've used brushes for paint before, and it takes a little getting used to using a brush on a touch screen, but once you kind of get the hang of it, it's a lot more intuitive than trying to use your finger or um, <clears throat> trying to use uh, a rubber, a standard rubber stylus like there is on the back of this uh, Sensu. And in most situations, it works really well. Uh, once you get your brush settings kind of dialed in and you practice a little bit with it, um, I would definitely would recommend it uh, for someone who's looking to do a little, take advantage of the art programs that they've bought for their iPad or whatever device you may be using. So as you can see by my drawing, I'm working on a little hippo here, and you just do nice fine little brush strokes. And the nice thing about doing this in a digital medium is that you can easily undo or uh, erase things without damaging your canvas. All right, now that we've taken a look at the Sensu, now time for some pros and cons. Uh, the biggest pro is definitely the brush. Uh, alone, that is the, the big feature on this little stylus, and it works really well uh, with all, all the touch interfaces that I've used it with, and it feels uh, a lot more natural than using a typical stylus. Uh, another pro would be its design. It's really simple, um, not much to it, but it's pretty elegant and it's got a good weight to it if you're used to using a typical brush to paint with. And now for the cons. Uh, the stylus is okay, uh, but it's really outshined by the brush on this and it, it gets by. Uh, you have to do apply a little bit of pressure before a lot of multi-touch devices will sense it, but it, it still works good. So is the Sensu brush and stylus a buy, try, or don't buy? Um, for me, it's a definite buy. I, I like using the brush a lot uh, for any of those art programs, and it works a lot better than if you're going to use your finger. I'm Brian Burnett. This has been the Sensu Stylus and Brush. See you next time on BYB. 
So, Brian, you're kind of the artist of the group here. Um, and I have to ask, I know that sometimes your moniker is Cranky Hippo and you obviously draw a nice hippo. Mm -hmm. Do you draw anything else? Uh, no, just hippos. So okay. you can see there's a lot of practice doing that. Well, it's a very nice hippo. I was just, it, how did we get to this point where, you know, you, you, you try out a stylist for BYB and, and you draw a hippo? <laughs> is that just, I mean, since childhood or? Uh, yeah, you, know, you stick with what you're good at. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Don't want to go out to... I could do pigs, but they look a lot like hippos, too. Yeah. So. <laughs> well, Brian, that was a wonderful review. Thank you uh, for, uh, for for reviewing the Sensu Portable Airbrush. Seems like it's pretty... Uh, it's certainly nice looking. Um, I love that. I love that brush, uh, particularly. All right. I said that Shannon would be appearing on the show, and indeed she is. So let's get right into her review of the AQ Audio Smart Speaker. Take it away, Shannon. Hey guys, I'm Shannon Morris, the producer of Before You Buy, and this week I have the AQ Audio Smart Speaker. To be specific, this one is the A1 Smart Speaker. There is an, also an A2 version that has different colors, but this one comes in black. Now let's talk about the design a little bit. Uh, this one has a really nice design. A lot of the speakers that have been coming out lately have very different designs. You have the Dre Pill, you have uh, the Jambox versions, and you also have this pretty one. The front is covered with the speaker fabric, and the back has this nice, kind of a rubber finish to it, so it doesn't shine, it doesn't pick up a lot of dust, and you have a nice little red spot on the bottom that is rubber so it doesn't move around a lot on a solid surface. So you're not going to end up pushing it over. It sticks pretty well. Uh, this is an interesting speaker because it is completely portable. It does take a wall charger to charge it up and it lasts about 10 hours. And then after that, you can take it with you to the beach or you can move it around your house. Pretty much anything you want to do, anywhere you want to take this, you can take it. Since it does last 10 hours, you can take it out, but you can't use, obviously, the wireless at the beach, but you can use it in your household. Now, another interesting thing about this one is on the back, you have the option to use this as a middle speaker, a left, or a right. So you can connect it to another AQ Audio Smart Speaker and use a left mode and a right mode so you kind of get a surround sound feel to it, which is pretty nice. Now, when they first came out with this, it used only AirPlay with the iPhone, iOS, pretty much iPod, iPads, you know, all of those. Now, with the update to the firmware, which you can get and download from your computer, it can also be used with Windows and Android devices. So, you can not only use this with iOS, but you also have the other two phones, which makes a lot of people in this office very happy. As far as the sound quality goes, this one is 24 watt output. So it can get very, very loud and have really, really good quality. But I did have a problem with this specific speaker that we had in house. When I went up to about halfway on the sound quality, it went out. It started going in and out with the sound and it got a little bit fuzzy. It sounded a, a little bit muted. And I have a feeling that that's just this speaker in particular, not the entire line. So I'm not going to base my review on that specific problem. I did check to see if it was just an airplay issue. I did make sure that I didn't have sound check on here. So I didn't have it set. So whenever I had sound check set, it would um, decrease the volume so it wouldn't get too loud. I turned that off. I also checked it with the wires to make sure this connection was okay and nothing actually worked to full volume. We also checked it with several other devices, so we did figure out that it was this particular speaker that was having that issue. And I'll give you a little demo of that in a moment. Now overall, this speaker costs $179, and you can get it on the AQ Audio site or Amazon.com. With that price in mind, and the fact that you have the audio jack, wireless, and you can use it with any kind of smartphones, pretty much any of your, um, your smart devices these days, and the fact that you can use it with left or rights. Um, all together, I have to say I'm gonna give it a don't buy, specifically because the price is a little bit too high for my standards for a speaker these days. Um, there are a lot of compare compatible choices on the market right now. There's a lot of other ones that you can compare it to as well. My pros and cons are, first off, pros. 
The dual speakers, being able to use it in left and right modes is very cool. I really like the fact that you can do it. I love the fact that it comes portable. It also comes with this cute little keychain so you can dock your phone on it, but it doesn't work if you try to stand it up straight. You can only do it like this. Yeah, yeah, that doesn't work so well. And it also can be used with your Windows device, your iOS, and your Android phones. So that's a really, really nice pro. The cons are the sound quality. It was a little muffled. I won't base everything completely on the fact that it didn't turn up all the way because I think that was just this one in particular. And it did have a somewhat complicated setup. If you've never used AirPlay before, you do have to actually RTFM, and if you don't RTFM, you might have an issue trying to figure it out on your computer or on the actual stereo on the speaker. And altogether, uh, yeah, it's a don't buy. Unfortunately, I was really looking forward to using this and taking it home and moving it around my house. But I gotta say, altogether, with with the sound issues and the fact that it is kind of a complicated setup for consumers. I'm going to have to give it a pass. Maybe that pill will be a little better. See you next time. Thanks, Shannon. Uh, I, I happen to, this just sort of dropped into my lap while Shannon was telling you all about it. Um, you know, it actually is pretty nice. Um, I, and I, I have to agree with Shannon that the, the, the body feels pretty solid. It's kind of heavy, though. Uh, she mentioned, you know, the portability and taking it to the beach and I don't know how much I'd really want to take this around with me. And if there's sort of any indication that it doesn't work all that well, I think not buying my, my Shannon might be uh, right on about that. But, uh, but thank you, Shannon, very much. Hope you're having a very good time at CES. And, uh, and thanks for all the good reviews. Hey, let's take a moment to thank audible.com for sponsoring this episode of Before You Buy. Have you used audible.com before? Because if you haven't, you're missing out on the biggest collection of audiobooks that your heart could ever desire. Over 100,000 titles, my friend. That's a lot of books. They're downloadable titles across all types of book. You know, we got literature, so that's fiction. You have nonfiction. You even have some periodicals that can be read to you. If you're in a position where you're not doing a lot of reading, but you have some time, you're, you know, you're a captive audience while you're commuting, you go to the gym, you'd nice to take long walks, or maybe your eyes just get tired at the end of the day. There are all sorts of reasons why audiobooks can help you read more. I mean, you want to be reading, right? That's the goal. So for listeners of Before You Buy, Audible has kind of a special little gift. It'll offer a free audiobook to give you a chance to try out the service. If you use Audible, you already know that Audible is awesome. You can search through bestsellers. You can search for a particular book. You can search by author. You can even search by the person who reads the book. Some people have like their favorite narrators and they just don't listen to anything because they love that voice so much. It's really quite a lot of fun. So if you want to try it out, go to audiblepodcast.com slash before you buy. Once again, audiblepodcast.com slash before you buy to pick up a free audiobook, give you a chance to try out the service. And uh, it's really, it's really, 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 really a fun service. I'm a commuter, so I always use commuting as an example, but you don't have to be in a car. You can be anywhere. You can listen to it, you know, on a speaker like this. If you feel like it, why not? Audiblepodcast.com slash before you buy. And thanks to the folks at Audible for being such a good sponsor of all of our Twitch shows. Show after show, we love you guys. Hey, so I've got a couple of people here with me. You've been very quiet and patient so far. It's kind of funny because sometimes I am I feel like I'm Tom and you're Ayaz and you're Sarah because this looks like the <laughs> TNT set, but it's all different now. Uh, Liz and John, hi. Hey. Welcome. <laughs> Welcome to our little show. Now I know that the two of you are sort of, sort of teaming up. Liz, you've got part of a review that John, you, you've you sort of got the other two parts of the review. So Liz, I don't know, do you want to start with the, your your Beats by Dre collection here? I, he gave me a little nod, so yeah. Okay. Sure, I guess. <laughs> so this is, a, this is a speaker. Yes, this is the Dr. Dre Beats pill. And I actually got the red, which is very fashionable, stylish, and- They actually call it a pill. Yeah, they do, literally okay. call it a pill. All right. <laughs> And it comes in black and red. And white. And oh, white's nice. Yeah. Uh-huh. Yeah. Oh, and a little a little one. USA type of a thing. That is new. <laughs> and, yeah. So the big thing about this is design. It's beautiful. It's very compact. It's sleek. And I had so many issues with it. <laughs> so what kind of it, like with sound or what were the issues? Well, first of all, when you think Dr. Dre, you think of rap music, 
bass, sure. you know, all that good stuff. And he, anything that has some bass on this does not sound good. Mm. It sounds tingy, you go too high, you just kind of get this kind of, you know, metal noise. And it's just, it just, it saddened me. <laughs> it really now, is. It, is it when you, when you turn it up too high, the volume isn't there? Or is it just happening at any volume? Well, if I took different songs that didn't have bass and did the same volume, then I didn't get that tingy noise. Uh -huh. So it's just things where if it just had a lot of bass, it just didn't sound that good. And I would compare it to a jam box. I would actually take, you know, my iPhone, play the same song, you know, turn this off and turn that one on and switch it back and mm -hmm. forth, same volume. And I didn't have that same issue, which a lot of reviews actually said they, a lot of bass, you're not going to get the best quality out of it, unfortunately. Mm. All right. Well, that's, yeah, that's, you think Beats by Dre. Yeah. That's, it's, it's like, yeah, I'm going to do this and Dr. Dre's going to sound awesome on Dr. Dre, but no. <laughs> yes. And not to mention, it does have a lot of great uh, Android features, but not as much iPhone features, which I can tell by the boxing. It has NFC connections. It has Apartment X technology, which is supposed to make the sound quality much better. Mm -hmm. I don't have any of that on an iPhone, but none of that says it on the boxing. You know, great Android features. You know, this is why I want, this is your speaker for your phone. So I was, I was surprised to find that out too. <laughs> So it seems like, yeah, if you read the speaker or you, or you read the box, rather, that the speaker comes in, the little pill comes in, you get a, basically a good indication of, oh, this maybe would be good for my Android friends because yeah. they can use this functionality that I just won't be able to take advantage of. Exactly. Yeah. Now, of course, a, a lot of that stuff might come to the iPhone eventually, but yes. you don't really want to buy a product hoping that your no. your <laughs> your your prove or your chosen I, uh, iOS uh, uh, phone is going to catch up. Yeah, no. So I, it was, it's a beautiful design and I really wanted it to be great because I love my jam box. I love my turtle shell and this one just sleek and it definitely competes with the jam box style mm -hmm. and what it's going for. Just the quality, just it saddened me. <laughs> now, how, how much is the, uh, the Beats pill? Well, this is $199 uh -huh. and then the jam box is there only $135 now. So it's a little pricey on that part too. Why do you think that it's more? Because the jam box actually gets really great reviews. Yeah, People love the jam box. Just came out new and it's supposed to be that whole stylistic thing. Oh, uh -huh. it has loud sound and all this stuff. It's a new big thing that Dr. Dre did, but it it's not living up in my expectations. So maybe it's a, you know, celebrity endorsed type of a thing. Yeah. So you, you, you want it to be something and it turns out that it isn't. No, uh, not, not the at first all, time that we've heard things like that. <laughs> all right. So the Beats Pill, I mean, I have to, I have to say it's, it sounds, I, I feel like I yeah. know what your review is going to end with. It's going to be a don't, oh, I'm going to say a don't buy for an iOS user, mm. but maybe for an Android user, maybe this is, it works really great with the NFC pairing and the apartment X technology does really make the sound that great, but as an iOS, I would say don't buy. All right. Don't buy from Liz Romero. That is, we got a couple of don't buys on the show. Maybe we'll turn this around. John <laughs> Slanina, AKA Jammer B, you are also reviewing the Beats uh, executive headphones. Is that what they're called? Executive noise canceling headphones. Oh, yes. Um, I really like these. Oh, you good. Do. Hey, yeah. our luck is changing. Yeah, so they're very nice looking headphones and uh, they sound really good. Um, they have a really balanced sound. I was expecting maybe they'd be heavier in the low end, but the sound was just really good. Uh, sweet throughout the spectrum. Maybe not as uh, wide a frequency range, the highest highs and the lowest lows that you might get with some more uh, um, audiophile type headphones, mm -hmm. but these are noise canceling headphones. So for noise canceling headphones, these sounded really good. There are certain applications you would use noise canceling headphones for. I wouldn't necessarily use them for um, listening to podcasts. There is a certain hiss you get mm -hmm. when you first turn them on. You can hear the noise canceling, and there is a, some noise canceling noise. But Heavy music seems to cover that up pretty well. And like I say, I listened to them for hours and hours and enjoyed them quite a bit, and they were very comfortable. So other than the having very specific application, loud, you know, rock kind of music, I don't know that I would enjoy them as much with light classical music because then the hiss of the noise cancellation might become apparent. I did try the noise cancellation out in the loading dock with our air compressor I used to pump up the balls, uh -huh. and it was it's very loud. effective. It was amazing. While I was listening to loud music, I turned on the air compressor, and I could feel it. You know, it shakes the floor, and it shakes the ball, but I couldn't hear it. So the noise canceling part of these headphones is really good. 
There is a problem, though, when you have noise-canceling headphones is you have to turn them on. Right. And they take batteries. Mm -hmm. And after listening to a bunch of music, I took them off one night and forgot to turn them off. So... What did it take? Like a couple triple A's? Yeah, no, or? two double A's. Two they double take two A's. double A's, and if you leave them on overnight and don't use them, you got to put fresh batteries in the next right. day. So, so that is one issue. Also, if you um, if you if you are adjusting them, if you touch them, then the noise cancellation says, "Oh, what was that?" And it it takes it a couple of seconds to level out again. So it's it's a strange thing that happens when you actually touch them. Um, now there isn't uh, some sort of just on and off switch. There is an on and off switch, and unfortunately, um, when you turn them off, uh -huh. they don't work at all. Yeah, there's no separate turn the noise cancellation part off. Um, but if you are going to use them, like on an airplane or in a noisy environment, and you're listening to loud music as opposed to spoken word, uh, I think they're really good. Um, they're pricey, but they're not unusually priced for noise cancellation headphones, especially ones that sound really good. Um, $299.95, at least on the website. Yeah, $300. Okay. So my pros with these are the fact that they sound good and that they're very comfortable and that the noise cancellation works really well. Um, the cons are uh, batteries. And if you forget to turn it off, you have to replace the batteries. It comes with two cables. Uh, this is the regular cable just for listening to music. It has a cable for using with uh, your iPhone or other phone that has the microphone switch that only worked partway for me. Uh, people could hear me. I couldn't hear them. I don't know if it's a problem with this particular cable, so I'm not really happy with using it as a, uh, a phone headphone and microphone, but as headphones for listening to music, I, I enjoyed them quite a bit. Mm -hmm. So that's... The Dr. Dre uh, ex uh, Beats Executive Noise Canceling Headphones. As a treat, I have a second review. All right. I have the RH RHA um, earbuds. Now, these are noise isolating earbuds. They don't have any active noise cancellation circuitry in them. Um, and I enjoyed these also. Of course, they're not going to sound nearly as good as the um, uh, headphones, but they do sound really good for what they are. They don't have a good low end, but you wouldn't expect earbuds like this to have a good low end. But for listening to podcasts, these are pretty good. And they, they do, because they fit in your ears, they do have a pretty good isolation. Mm -hmm. The thing about these that is quite different from the Dr. Dre's is the phone calls I made with their microphone and the switch that the microphone has, uh, I could hear very well and people could hear me very well. So these also work very well as a headset for uh, iPhone. Um, and other earbuds that I've used, when you touch the cable, they tend to, the, the noise seems to be transmitted up until the earbuds. These have this anti tangle cable also the uh, they're kind of it's quiet i'm not hearing all the noise that i other earbuds when mm -hmm. i'm touching the cable i hear a lot of noise so I, I like the fact that they've engineered that out of them they got the little they got the little rubber guys at the at the edge too did you find uh, it comfortable these, i mean for, along with the noise isolation because yeah, i always have problems with those in ear these are the earbuds. ones that came with it and they do they they fit me very well and i found them very comfortable but they also come with um seven other sets of slightly varying sizes so that if these aren't exactly right for you, and I didn't really try any of the others because these did fit well for me, there are other options. So they, they should fit pretty well. Now, because these, again, have a very specific use case, they don't have great low end, which you wouldn't expect from earbuds anyway, I'm going to give them a try. The, the pros are that they fit well, and you have a lot of options for uh, different size ears. Um, the the f making phone calls on it works really well, and the cable doesn't transmit a bunch of noise if you're like exercising or something, and the cable's moving around. But the if you're li listening to music, they won't be as satisfying as other earbuds I've tried that do seem to have a better low end. Now, if the if the Beats Executive at three hundred dollars are just too pricey, uh, remind me what the RHA headphones they are run for. Fifty dollars. Fifty dollars. So yeah. that's a big that's yeah. a big plus too. Well, I mean, unless you're looking for nineteen dollars yeah, headphones. Yeah. Well, for headphones that work really well as a headset for your phone, uh, I think fifty dollars is pretty good because they sound good. They um, they don't. 
have the full range for music, but if you're in a situation where you can't wear headphones or you don't want to wear headphones, this is pretty good sound for your buds. Very good. All right. Well, thank you, John. We got we got Beats and we got RHA, so sort of, sort of the big end, and then the the in in the ear end uh, of the market. So thank you very much. We have one more review, and this is from Leo himself. I mentioned at the top of the show we were going to be talking about light bulbs. They've never been so exciting. Leo, take it away with a Philips Hue. Hello, everybody. I'm here to tell you about. Hue. Why would you might ask? Why would you pay two hundred dollars for three, count them three light bulbs, and sixty dollars each for additional light bulbs? Well, you might if they're these. These are Philips new LED bulbs. They're called Hue. And I'll tell you, first of all, one of the things that's cool about these bulbs is for the first time, Philips has managed to get LED bulbs looking somewhat like a real bulb. No fins, no weird coloration. It just looks like a, a, a normal bulb. These Hue bulbs, uh, I, I've been putting in my 45 watt uh, track lighting. That's kind of what we have here. And that's kind of what they're designed uh, to work with. And I've set it up here. So you get three of these bulbs. Let me turn that off. You can see it. It decided to go on because I had reset it. I got three of these bulbs and you also get with the base unit, three bulbs and a base station. This is required and can run up to 50 Hue light bulbs. So uh, what this does is you plug it into your ethernet, into your uh, access point uh, and plug it into the wall. And then it uses the Wi-Fi to talk to these bulbs. It's using a, a signaling standard, a home automation standard called Zigbee. So theoretically, you could integrate this into other Zigbee software. Now, here's the cool part. If you've got Android uh, or iOS, this is on an iPhone or on an iPad. I'm going to show you on the iPad so you can see it. The Hue application, that's a free application. It comes with some preset scenes. So let's pick Deep C, for instance. Now, the way this is configured, these bulbs each assume a shade that has been pre-programmed into Deep C, and I'll show you how that works. I'll, I'll select Deep C. Can you see that okay? Yep. And I'll go into the edit. So Deep C is actually an undersea picture. I can assign each bulb to a different part of that picture, and that bulb will shift to that color. You could have all the bulbs be the same color if you decide, you know, what, what deep sea means to me is a deep blue. I have five bulbs set up here. I'm only using three at the moment, but I have five total in my, in my collection, uh, my Hue collection. So now they're all the same color. I'm going to save that out. And so I can have, you see that? They're all deep sea blue. They're actually literally matching that color. That's because each bulb has three LED elements in it, a red, a green, and a blue, and it combines them. Also in the setting, I can change the brightness. There's an there's a up and down. So you, you have a dimmer capability, which is kind of nice because, uh, frankly, um, the way most LED bulbs work, they're not dimmable. They have some special dimmable bulbs. These are technically not dimmable, uh, but in fact they are because uh, the controller allows me to do that. So you do need the iPhone app to take advantage of this. It also comes with some, some special settings for three different uh, tasks. Let me go into the edit on this. This is called Concentrate, but if I edit it, you'll see there's Relax, there's Concentrate, there's Energize, and there's Reading. These are the beginning point for light recipes. Let me make sure I've got all my bulbs here. Uh, this is one of the negatives on Hue is that it doesn't automatically detect all the bulbs. You have to go out, detect bulbs, then add them to the recipes. Now all the bulbs are in the reading mode, which is a, a warm light. Energize is basically a daylight. Let's go to Energize. So it's for when you wake up, you'll energize. That's sun quality, kind of bluish. Concentrate is similar with maybe a little bit of warmth added to it. And Relax is the warmest of all, a very relaxing, almost kind of firelight. So you can have pre-programmed settings or recipes, but here's something really cool. I can make my own recipes and I can even do it from a picture. So let's say I love how this set looks, and I do actually, and I want to kind of duplicate the feeling that this set has. I could take a picture of it either with a special, you know, with a good camera or just use my iPhone or my uh, iPad in this case. Now watch. I can actually say which light bulbs are going to take which part of this scene. So let's make light bulb one be roughly the color of that transmitter. Light bulb three, 
four, five, and then six can be that color. And they've actually now assumed the colors from that region of the image. Actually, Alex Lindsay's kind of excited about this because for theatrical lighting or uh, for television lighting, you can totally control not just color temperature, but the colors it set themselves. You can really control what you're going to get. So I installed these, and I'm going to save that scene out. Now, whenever I press that button, the, the, the lights are going to go to that shade. Here's beach. There's all different kinds. Uh, it comes with some presets. Uh, in every case, when you have new bulbs, though, you have to go into the setting. I'll show you ski and make sure all the bulbs are turned on for that setting and then place all the bulbs into the scene. The ski is a mountain, so you've got some snow. You've got some blue sky. Uh, maybe we'll put a little bit of granite in there. We'll set, you could set the level. And then we're going to save that out. And look, we've got our ski scene. You don't really get the effect in this setting, but if you imagine these lights in your ceiling or in track lighting in your room, it really makes the room feel like the sun is coming up or you're on a Grecian island or you're skiing on a mountain. It, it actually works. It gives you exactly the effect you'd imagine uh, as if you're in the room. You can save as many scenes as you want. As I said, it comes pre-programmed with some scenes. And even better, you can also set alarms. And that I really really like. The alarms mean uh, I can say, uh, in fact, I use it this way. Uh, I want in the morning, I want it to start in an energize mode. So let's go to our energize mode. And I want it to go on at a certain time in the morning. Let's say I'm going to switch my energize mode on with a three minute fade at about 6.30 a.m. So my room will go from dark to daylight over a three minute period, very gradually, you also have a nine minute fade in. And then I could say, switch that scene off at 6.45 and I could put a new scene on. So it can go into, uh, you know, uh, relax mode, daytime mode, energize mode, go out and hit the slopes mode. I mean, I think this is really an interesting way to do an alarm clock. Now at 6.30 in the morning, we'll go into energize mode. It'll take about nine minutes to ramp up, so it'll slow me, wake me up. And by 6.45, the lights will fade back out and I'll be out and on my way. Uh, I have to say that is very cool. So all in all, this is pretty amazing. It's expensive, 200 bucks for the full kit. Uh, that includes three LED light bulbs and the base station. You have to have that. And then you can add additional light bulbs up to a total of 50 light bulbs for $60 each. I suspect those prices will fall. LED light bulbs have gotten cheaper and cheaper. The first time I saw them, they were well over $100. I'm now seeing LED light bulbs for as little as $30. So these are kind of in the mid-range. But given what they do, I think that they're not overly expensive. The other thing to point out is LEDs last a lot longer than incandescent lights. Philips says you're going to get... Let me just check here what they say. I think it's 15,000 hours out of these light bulbs. A good long time. Uh, you got 8.5 watts of use. That's another way you save for about 60 watts of output. These are 600 lumens coming out at 8.5 watts, 15,000 hour time. Uh, this is using, as I said, Wi-Fi. It's 2.4 gigahertz using a Zigbee signaling protocol. So pros and cons on Philips' new Hue light bulbs. The pros, it does exactly what it says. You have absolute control over the brightness and the color temperature, even the colors of any room using these light bulbs. Um, the cons, takes a little bit of programming to set it up the first time, and they are expensive. But I have to say, if you're willing to spend the price, and again, I think in the long run, these won't cost more than incandescent bulbs because you don't have to buy new ones. If you're willing to spend the price, if you have an iPhone or an Android device, an iPad, a way to control it, this is an absolute buy. I just love these Hue light bulbs. This is the first innovative thing I've seen in lighting in quite some time. That's it. A definite buy on Hue. I'm Leo Laporte for Before You Buy. Thanks, Leo. That looks awesome. You can control your own light bulbs. Yeah, it's really good. And as he mentioned, it's a little bit expensive, and that's probably a hindrance for some people. But man, you know, if you can swing it, I think you'd probably have a lot of fun. More fun than you've ever had with a light bulb. That's for sure. Hey, if you want full reviews on everything that without, that that all of the, the Twit staff reviews on Before You Buy, you can always go to youtube.com slash twit. Our full reviews are there. You can share them with your friends. If you know that somebody really want to see that Beats audio segment that 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 Liz uh, wrapped up for us, that sort of thing, you can find them there. Again, that's youtube.com slash twit. And if you have 
ideas for products that you'd like us to review or maybe feedback from products that we have reviewed. You really don't agree that John said it was a try. You can email us at byb at twit.tv. Uh, thank you in advance to everybody who watches and gives us feedback every week. And you can find many of our buy picks on our website, uh, twitpix at twit.tv slash byb. John Slanina, thank you so much. Thank you. Thank you. They're, they're just sitting here, so I figured like, we might as well just all say goodbye. Liz Romero, thank you so much. Yay. Liz is not even feeling that well. So what a trooper. Beats power. <laughs> there you go. Team the team of beats. Brian Burnett, who's behind the controls, thank you for being part of the review process this week. Shannon Morse, of course, who's at CES, who produces Before You Buy. She produced this whole show. I'm just... I'm just sort of a scarecrow who sits here at the very end. And of course, Leo Laporte, who was at CES this week, but will be back next week to host Before You Buy. Until then, thanks for watching, everybody. See you next time on Before You Buy. And I'm sure Leo has something really funny that he says at the end, but I don't know because I'm usually not here at this time. <laughs> You've got to watch. Before You Buy. You've got to watch Before You Buy. <laughs>